Good afternoon, everybody. Tyler with Arizona Adventure Rentals uh, here with you on the 2015 Mercedes uh, View. This is a, an RV made by uh, Winnebago, a very popular model. And part of the reason is, is because it's on a Mercedes Sprinter 3500 chassis. So it does have a diesel 3.0 engine, which is very popular with the Mercedes. Uh, it also has a generator back there that is a diesel as well. So great power. Uh, they drive a little smoother because they're Mercedes and you get better gas mileage as well. So uh, this is your entry door. Uh, I do like it because the remote on the entry door, you can actually press on your keypad that locks that door so you don't have to do that manually. Uh, you have a back storage down storage underneath here. These are vents for your hot water and your heater um, and your fridge. And then this is an outside uh, storage. You have another storage there is your generator. Uh, that you don't need to get into because you can turn that in from the inside. And then you have your storage where we keep the black hose. Um, here is where you fill it full of fresh water. And then there's also another place to fill it full of fresh water on the other side. And this is another storage. So that's it for the right side. We'll go over on the left side and talk about where all the connections are. Well, the left side of this front RV, uh, now you only have the slide all the way in. So normally once you park, you can put the parking brake on and bring that slide all the way out. Um, and it goes out quite a bit to give you a lot more room inside. Um, but we have it in so we can show you everything on this left side. Diesel is right here. It holds about 38 gallons of diesel. The generator runs off of that same tank. So you don't need to worry about filling up diesel for the generator. If it's under a quarter tank, the generator will not run. So keep that in mind. Um, diesel is there. Make sure you put diesel in it. It does not take gasoline. If you put gasoline in it, you will not get very far. Uh, we'll do a lot of engine damage. Propane is here. This is all digital. You actually have two propane switches. Uh, this is just an on and off switch. And then you have a valve there where they fill you up. You don't need to know much about the propane other than the switch is there. There's a switch inside. You need to fill it up. You take it full, you bring it back full. It's very simple. There's a lot of places that have propane. Any of the places that uh, have gas, your big gas stations and stuff like that all have propane. You pull up there and you just need to tell them that your propane's here. They flip your switch off. They fill you full of propane. Just make sure that they fill it back up. Um, propane is there. This is a big storage underneath here. We keep uh, hoses and dump hoses and freshwater hoses there. And then obviously this slides all the way back out to here. Uh, this is not a storage compartment. And then we'll bring you in here and we'll talk about the dump and filling up full of fresh water. Okay, so here on the left part of this RV uh, is your water fill up and your dump. Um, a lot of time and your electrical as well. Any place that has an RV hookup, Usually all the hookups are in the left rear. That's the case in this situation. So if everyone's backed up in their parking spot, in their RV spot, you'll have to back up in there as well, hook up your water, hook up your electricity, and hook up your dump. Uh, so your dump hose is uh, up front there on that storage compartment. Uh, you have a cap right here. You just take this cap off, half of clip off. You'll see that they have claws there. You just go half of clip on. Make sure everything's very secure. Once everything's secure, you have a black waste valve that comes towards you uh, about four inches then you'll hear all the black uh, come out that is all toilet water after you drain that out you would shut it you would pull gray gray is what would flush and clean that out as well if you're somewhere for uh, a couple days or staying there for the night you could always leave both of those valves open and that way you don't have to worry about your tanks filling up they will drain straight out now before you leave i usually shut both valves if you don't know if you went to the bathroom last or the shower last it's always better to run some fresh water through your hose before you put it away. How you do that, just turn your water pump on, run water through the kitchen or the, the sink uh, for a few minutes, then come out here, pull gray, that will flush and clean your water hose out. Um, your water hose can hook up right here. And right now this valve is the only one that you would really touch. That is on tank fill and that is on normal. I always keep it on normal. Normal means city fill. And another terminology for city fill just means that it pressurizes your system. So if you leave your water hose hooked up to there on normal mode, which is city fill, that will pressurize your system. The minute you turn that valve sideways here, then all of a sudden you will hear water gush in. That will start to fill your 35 gallon tank up of fresh water. Once that fills up, it will overflow in the middle of the RV. Then you know that's full. Keep in mind, a lot of people don't travel with it full. Uh, if you're going to travel long distances from place to place, normally people just have a third tank of water because you don't want to carry all the weight and drive smoother with less weight and better gas mileage with best with but with more weight um, so that's a water pump switch you can turn that on if you want to wash your hands or wash anything out here these are if you want to drain any of your waters those bottom valves normally you don't want to drain your fresh water or if you any of your other waters um, the only one you're going to use is hook your hose up to there and then you're going to go city fill or 
normal fill. This is a 30 amp plug that we have plugged in here. Um, we give people an adapter. An adapter is a 15 amp to just go into an extension cord. The only thing that cannot run off that extension cord is going to be uh, your microwave and your air conditioning. But if you're a park somewhere and you want to just keep your batteries charged, you can. But this comes with 25 feet of a 30 amp plug and then we give you an adapter. There is an outlet right here. So right now we are plugged in, so we have live power in there. Um, but it's very important that when you're not plugged in, this plug needs to be plugged into its outlet here. So very common people call me if they say the generator's running, nothing's working inside, you don't have any uh, microwave and you don't have any air conditioning, then you know that you don't have any power. Come over here to make sure this plug is plugged back into itself. The minute you plug into itself, the generator will have live power. And then if you plug it in to a place where you're staying at your resort, you should have live power. There's also a big switch normally on where you're going to stay at your RV park. So if you plug in here, I always go straight to the clock on the microwave. If it's not on, then go to outside, see if there's a breaker on there. And there's usually a breaker that you can flip up at your RV resort. Once you have the clock on, the microwave, you know you have live power in there and then you're good to go. So that's it for the left part of this RV. We'll go ahead and walk inside and give you a rundown of the inside layout. Okay, so here's the front engine compartment area, driver area where you'd be driving this uh, Mercedes view. Um, very nice, smooth driving RV. Uh, you got your set, your cruise control just like this. I do like these shades. You can put the, pop these shades in, pop these shades in. If you look at our pictures that we have on the website, these swivel all the way around both of these chairs so that you can still access this and use all this as a hangout area. This does have a tilt wheel. You got your uh, electric mirrors, um, cruise control, windshield wipers. It does have Bluetooth. It does have rear uh, video with the rear camera with rear audio as well. Uh, the minute you put the rear view camera on, you can or you can put it on manually. Um, Bluetooth is always 0000 or 1234 if you want to hook up your Bluetooth. This is just all your controls for air conditioning. Um, you have just normal lights up top there. Battery boost in case you'd kill battery in the front or battery in the rear. Battery boost connects your two batteries together. You never really kill this front battery, um, but if you wake up dry docking, you can also hold the battery boost to start your generator up or just start up the generator or just start up the RV. Radio power, that means that radio power will be on full time. Um, that's it for pretty much inside of the front of this RV. It's nice because of the turnaround seats and still be able to access all this and still have privacy. Um, then we'll get you pointed around backwards and show you, show you in the back. Okay, so now here we're inside of the 2015 um, Winnebago view, inside facing backwards. This is a very good layout because the slide is where you want it, which is the living room. So this is one big slide starting from here over to there. Right now we have this all slid out, so this makes it into tons of room. In order for that slide to work, the engine has to be running, parking brake engaged, and then there's an, a slide here that goes in and out. So this is a nice big slide. There's lots of storage underneath here. These all have a hitch, have the latches underneath there. Pull up, like kind of like airplane style. Lots of storage here. Microwave, uh, if you want to run this microwave, RV has to be um, plugged in with your 30 amp plug or you have to have the generator running for this to work. Big closet space here. Um, I do like this. You have uh, lights here, one sink here, lots of storage underneath. I do like how it does have a water pump in here. This is your shower and your sink. Right inside here to your left has a water pump switch. And if you're gonna go to the bathroom, always turn the water pump on. So you have a water pump back there and up here at your display panel. Um, this is your bed, which is about a full size bed. Lots of storage underneath there as well. You can find lots of lighting switches. And just start looking underneath and you'll find lots of light switches. Lots of storage up here. This is where you can do all your cookware. Uh, put all your cookware. This is your stove area up here. These are all lighting, upside lighting that's inside and back lighting. Um, this is your TV. Now this runs off an inverter. Your inverter is up here. You just flip that green button on. It's one of the only RVs that you can actually have the inverter on to run your TVs. So if you're going down the road and you can actually stick a DVD straight into the player here or, or play music from there, but you stick a DVD in there and that will play music, uh, that will play the TV up here. You can also unclip it underneath here. There is a Chromecast up there. There's the remotes and there's everything you need. You actually don't need the remotes. There's all the, the displays here. So you can turn your inverter on to run your TVs. Um, there's lots of storage up there, and then we have um, 
we have the storage up there with the flip down cushion and then you also have ways to secure everything up there so you don't have people looking in so that's it for this facing backwards we're going to go ahead and pull you up here to talk about the display panel and the fridge okay so here is your display panel this is up above the fridge and the freezer uh, this is your display panel this is your slide room switch that's your propane valves that's your generator plug and that's your inverter we'll start here with your main display panel water pump turn the water pump on flip that on and you have your water pump pressure that will display on turn that off when you're not using it um, in case there's a water leak or something usually that is turns off automatically uh, when there's pressure but if you're low on water then you definitely always want to just turn that on when you need it you can heat the water with electric uh, electric if you're plugged in or with the generator on normally you just run lp uh, lp water always works a little bit quicker a little bit faster but if you're plugged in you can use heat these are your tank levels so this will tell you right where your tank tank levels that's a quarter tank we have a fresh water gray tanks are empty uh, gray tank is your shower water and your sink water and then your your black is empty which is just your toilet water lp is propane uh, it's quarter tank you always take it full bring it back full propane will run four things it will run your fridge uh, your freezer it will run um, your stove and it will run your heater at night and then it will also heat your water so those are the four things that that will run that usually lasts about a week depending on how much uh, stove and how much heater at night you work on um, this is your slide slide is just in and out in order for this slide to work the rv has to be on and the parking brake needs to be engaged as long as the parking brake is on um, and the rv is running then they go in and out and that will come out Propane valve, that's a switch. There's also a switch on the actual propane tank itself. You would flip that switch off or the switch the ins outside for them to fill it. Once they fill it up, you flip this on and the one outside, always go to the stove and get with the lighter, get all the water, the uh, air out of the system. And that is your hot, um, this is a heater for your ta black tank. You usually don't need those unless you're at really, really cold temperatures. Um, this is your propane, or this is your generator that runs off of diesel and it runs off the same tank as the RV. You would just flip that on and you just press that on, then your generator's on. Um, that would produce power when you're going down the road. A lot of times people run that generator um, if you want to run your air conditioning going down the road. This is an inverter. This is one of the only RVs that you can have the inverter on and going down the road to run your TVs and to run your fridge. Um, then you can not have to have the generator running just to watch a movie down the down, going down the road. Um, so that's charging. If, you are, if you're plugged in, you can always have the inverter on. You don't need the inverter on if you're plugged in, but if you're going down the road traveling, you can invert. If you're parked, it will invert for a few hours until your batteries die, and then you will need to start your generator back up. That's if you're boondocking. Um, that's it for your display panels up here. We'll go ahead and talk down low with a thermostat for the air conditioning and then talk about the fridge. Okay, so here's your fridge. It's This is a very common Norcold uh, fridge. Runs off a couple different settings. The best setting I always like is always uh, propane. So if you're gonna be traveling down the road, right now we're plugging in. We're plugged in right now so you can actually have it on plug mode. That means you are running off of electricity. They can adjust the temperature by uh, little to max. And then the other mode is battery mode. Battery mode kills battery pretty quick. Um, and the next mode would be flame. Flame mode would be propane. That's the best mode I usually keep it on. Um, propane, then it will run off of propane and battery. I usually leave it on propane mode uh, while you're traveling, while you pick it up, it will probably be on propane mode. Get up to wherever you're at, you can flip it over to plug mode once you are plugged in somewhere. Uh, it's a lot simpler, so that way, uh, usually you, when you pick it up, the fridge is already cold, or you put on propane mode. Uh, four or five hours, fridge gets freezer gets cold, then down to the fridge, and then you're good to go. Um, as long as it's not blinking, you don't have any issues. You know there's an issue if that starts blinking. It's either because you're low on battery volts, you're out of propane, uh, or it just needed to reset. Turn it off, wait a few seconds, turn it back on. Make sure you have propane. If you have propane, make sure you have propane at the stove. If you have propane, this will always work on propane mode, uh, propane and battery. Um, this is your thermostat. Basic thermostat, just kind of like you have at your home. You can either do hot or cool, and you can do fan mode. I always put fan mode on auto because if you're going to want the AC on, usually it's max mode. And then you have two ways to heat it. You can heat with electric, which would you have to be plugged in, or you can heat with furnace. These are just light switches. That's a TV switch for the inverter. Um, these are outlets. And this is if you want to run anything off of that TV up front there. Um, we did talk about the Chromecast and things on the back part of that TV. 
but that also comes up to here. So you can run whatever you want off of these TVs, cable, um, charger for the cigarette lighter, and then some RCA cables there. So that is it for the inside of this uh, Sprinter Mercedes-Benz 3500. If you have any questions, just let us know. Like and subscribe if this video helped you.